Awaken Creators. Amanda here. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Today's creative update is quite special. Um, I've been really wanting to share this, um, this piece for a while. Um, hold on. Let me just see if I can update my audio over on YouTube. I'm not sure. I hope you guys can hear me okay on YouTube. Um, I'd love it if you could give me a sign in the chat that the audio is not too bad. It wouldn't allow me to change my microphone setting. Um, but so today's creative update I've been wanting to give for a while. Um, the piece that I'm going to share with you today has been finished for a couple weeks, a few weeks now. Um, but it's taken me a bit to build up my comfort and confidence in wanting to share this piece with you all because it's obviously a sensitive subject, as you can see from the title. Hi, Venus artists. Welcome, welcome to the conversation today. Um, so I'm not going to give an update on my writing. I'll do that next time we meet. Um, and I, I probably will even just read you some of my novel, which is very exciting. Um, but for this particular um, creative update, I really want to talk about this piece. Um, so the piece that you see behind me that I'm going to move my sketchbook so you can see, <laughs> and that we're going to talk about today um, is all about my own healing journey through sexual abuse. And it can be really difficult for people to talk about their experiences with sexual abuse. It's not something that we have a lot of um, experience in dialoguing about in this society, unfortunately, because um, it's so common that it happens, but yet we don't really have language or tools to talk about it with each other. And we need to talk about it with each other. We need to communicate our pain. We need to share it. We need to express it. We need to sit with it. And when we have the tools to do that, we can start to integrate those experiences and heal from them. So without those tools, without that language, a lot of victims can feel, or not victims, but survivors can feel um, lost and alone. Um, so I wanted to share my very personal journey to healing with you um, in hopes that it would inspire whoever sees this present and future, um, that you are first and foremost not alone and primarily that your art is a very powerful tool for healing. And when I say art, I am a visual artist as well as a writer. You could be a dancer, a designer, a musician. It doesn't matter what your art form is. That is your tool. That is your gift. That is what will help you heal. Welcome, Dancing Warrior Goddess. Um, so before we get started, I did want to, um, I did want to light a candle and I want to light this candle on behalf of everyone who is suffering uh, from the current or past uh, and will also light a candle for those in the future who will be subject to any form of abuse, but especially sexual abuse. And I want to light this candle for them as a candle of hope, a symbol of possibilities to heal, to come out of the fire and become something beautiful and allow your story and all of that pain to help others, to help heal others. 
and I light this candle and call for courage, for strength, for doing whatever you need to do to help yourself feel safe and loved. That takes a lot of bravery. So to those of you who have past experiences, present experiences, and or no family members who are suffering, we light this candle for them. Hi, kindness revitalized. Welcome. All right. So let's welcome ourselves all into this space with just some deep breaths, because this isn't just me sharing my art with you. This is all of us sitting together, learning about each other, learning from each other's art forms, sharing your heart, really. Anytime you share your creativity with someone, you're sharing a piece of your soul, you're sharing a piece of your heart, you're sharing a piece of yourself. And you're not doing it for them, but you are doing it with them. And so I want to honor this space together with some deep breaths. So wherever you are, let's just take a few deep inhales into the belly and exhale out through the mouth. Permission to be here now. Permission to be as vulnerable and open as you feel safe to be. And permission to hold space for your desire to feel healed, for your desire to feel free, and for your desire to feel whole again after whatever it is that you've gone through. I honor you for being here and making this time for yourself. <sighs> you so much for being here. Hi, SC Sparks. Hello. Thank you for being here. So it's a difficult subject to talk about, right? Um, most forms of abuse, a huge aspect of it is hiding and secrecy and denial or um, manipulation, things that are very much so intended to be stuffed away and not have anyone look at them. So I want to acknowledge that it's difficult to talk about this stuff, but I really am ready to share this piece and I'm ready to help inspire those of you who are um, getting ready to share or feeling like you want to be ready to share um, the courage to do so. But I do want to acknowledge that it's difficult. Um, and in that, in that reflecting on the difficultness of something that's cloaked in all of this hiding and secrecy, is the power of bringing it out, talking about it, creating whole works of art with that being the sole focus. And for a long time, I did not, um, I did not really like talk about my experience. I would share it with my partners, people I would get close to and feel safe with. I would share it with them. Um, my, uh, you know, a couple of my siblings, or at least one of my siblings I know knew prior to this. Now more of them know because they follow me, but um, it wasn't something that I talked about all the time. 
Um, but it was something that certain people knew about my lived experience. Um, and I think even for me, it was like hiding it from myself, like did not, not really making a big deal about it. Kind of like, yeah, it happened. Um, but here I am and I'm just going to kind of move on with my life. But I started to realize after a few years of being, um, well, after a little while of being married to my partner, um, that it was affecting me in ways that I didn't really realize it was still affecting me. There were certain aspects of intimacy or getting close or comfortability with my body, comfortability with certain forms of physical touch that were uncomfortable for me that I recognize now as uh, symptoms of the past abuse, um, that it was still unresolved. It was still something that was affecting me that I had not um, fully dealt with. I hadn't really integrated it. Um, so as we began to explore some of the questions about the... Um, struggles that we were having, intimacy struggles that we were having, um, and a couple of other incidences where my, um, my, my paranoia about other people being abusers was at an all-time high, um, especially after I had my child. Um, I remember saying for the longest time that if I had a girl, if I had a baby girl, she would never, ever be allowed to wear dresses without pants, shorts, <laughs> freaking chastity belt. I don't care. Like she wouldn't be allowed to wear dresses freely. And um, high dream state visions, high dress materials. Um, I recognize now that that parental boundary was taken advantage of whilst wearing a dress. And I had a son. Um, so you would think maybe that that trauma, um, thinking thought pattern would not apply, but, oh, it still finds a way to creep into your life. <laughs> At least it did for me. It found its way to creep into my life that overnights with family members were uncomfortable for me. Um, even allowing my like son to like sleep in our bed wasn't very comfortable for me for a while. I got used to it because I saw he loved just being close to us and I wanted him to feel secure. Um, but there were difficulties coming up in my life. And so I knew I needed to heal. I knew I needed to do something about it. And after I had some pretty um, dramatic bouts of paranoia. Um, I decided to reach out for help and get in contact with a therapist. And as I'm, I'm talking on the phone, I actually, I called a hotline, um, which is one of the resources I want to encourage you to check with your employer. If you have a traditional employer, there may have EAP, which is an employee assistance program. Every place I've worked has always had EAP. So I don't know if your employer would have it, but there's usually a free hotline to just connect you with resources, whatever you need. So I just called up EAP and I said, I need a therapist. I need help with some PTSD symptoms are coming up and like causing me havoc. And they, the person on the phone was actually really and I feel like it was such divinely timed and divinely connected. This person was my little angel. And this person talked about their own experience and said, hey, you know what? I've heard really good things about EMDR, um, which I believe is called like, it's like eye movement 
something or other. I forget the exact, but it's EMDR and you can Google it. It's an eye movement type of therapy. Um, and this person's telling me about it. And I'm like, wow, that sounds really cool. Like, yes, sign me up with, find a therapist in my town that does EMDR. And so they did. And as part of this free hotline, you get like your first three sessions for free. So I started going to this person and boy, howdy, does that stuff work? And it's scary too, because it really required me to go back even before the abuse and find these other roots of shame in my life related to sexuality. And I had an early experience that exposed me to sexual activity very young um, that I was like curious because I was a kid, like what am I seeing? But I carried throughout my life this guilt and wrongness about myself and that really affected me. And then coupled with the, you know, a few years later having an abuse experience, um, there was a lot of guilt and shame and feeling just bad, feeling just like a bad person. Um, and thank goodness to, um, to my partner and partner, Michael, who at the time held massive space for me to go through all of this and to let me freak out and to let me cry. And I pray that you too, if you're struggling, have someone. Um, and if you don't, I am not kidding. You can private message me. Like I will be your person. I don't care. I will be your person and I will hold space for you because we cannot do this alone. The, the abuse itself was an aloneness experience. It was a separateness. It was a secrecy. And so we have to do the opposites, come together, talk about it, be open with each other, create safe space, space that feels good enough for us to share and be vulnerable without fear. So we create those spaces ourselves if we didn't have those spaces earlier. I just want to pause and read these comments. Hello, lovely being and to all here, much love and comfort to us all today. Yes. Thank you, Dream State Visions. Thank you for your bravery today, Amanda. Thank you for being here. I'm brave because you all encourage me to be brave. And so I thank you for that. I feel cool. Um, and EMDR is something I've always wanted to do. So glad you're talking about this. Yes, I feel like it's effective in reprogramming um, <clears throat> reprogramming your um, thoughts around a particular event. But it does require you to go back to that experience, which can be very difficult. Um, so just prepare yourself. And of course, that's why there's a therapist there to help you. Um, but so I tried this, right? This is what I was trying. And because of issues with my insurance, I had to stop my therapy. And I didn't get to go all the way with it. Um, so it was like, I got kind of partially healed, but I like, well, I kind of resolved some things, but I didn't really get to go all the way into it. Um, and so I sort of, I think told myself I was healed, like, and I sort of just moved on and I didn't really think much about it. Like, oh, it was good enough. You know, it helped me with that one very early experience, but we hadn't even got to the abuse yet. Um, so like I said at the beginning, because I had just kind of brushed it off as like this thing that happened to me, but it's not really like deeply affecting my life and I'm just going to move on, even though it was starting to show up in so many places, I once again just sort of was like, oh, whatever, you know, and I let work distract me and I let new experiences distract me and we kind of just like moved on. Um, but very recently within the last year or so, 
it came back with a vengeance. It was like, you have got to deal with this now. My marriage was being affected. Our, our sexual union was being very much so affected. Um, and it just wasn't fun for me anymore. Like, in my my mind, I was still being terrorized by these intrusive thoughts. Um, and when you're trying to be intimate with someone you love and you keep having these intrusive thoughts, it is very uncomfortable, disheartening, disturbing. Like, it's not something that feels good at all. And it's not something you want to share because then you ru you ruin it, right? And you, you know, there's all these feelings that are confusing. And um, when I decided for the second time, I am so done with this. I just, I want to move on. It has been 30 years since this happened to me. And I just want to move on. Like, I don't want to have these thoughts anymore. I want to be free. I started opening my heart to resources again and the universe delivered like gangbusters. I found a book. I don't even remember how I found it. Um, I found a book at the library called the sexual healing journey. And it's by Wendy Maltz. And I highly recommend this book if you're struggling and if you really want to go deep. Warning, that book is filled with stories of people's experiences. So it was like I had to get, it's same with the EMDR, right? I had to sit back in that dark energy in order to move through it. So you've got to prepare yourself anytime you're healing to sit with the shadow. You've got to invite it to the table. You've got to say, what do you, what do you want from me? What are you trying to teach me so that you can go on your merry way? Because I would like to be free from this. But you have to invite it to the table. So sitting with that book, and I was determined, I usually don't read books all the way through. I am so guilty of that. I will get like a zillion books at the library and I will read like two or three chapters and then, you know, on to the next thing. Um, but I was determined to read this book every single page. There's quizzes in it. There's exercises in it. I was like, I'm going to do it all. And I did. Um I mean, I did with a pencil so I could erase my notes, but like I was determined to read this book and it did start bringing stuff up for me. There were times when I was reading it, I would cry. There was times I was reading it and I would think, ah, these people have gone through so much more tough stuff than me. Like, why am I so deeply affected by my experience by comparison seems so light, but you really that thinking is so unhelpful because it's still your experience. It doesn't matter if your abuse was a day, uh, a week, decades, you know, super dramatic, like, you know, the most horror movie script you could ever think of. It doesn't matter. It's still abuse. It's still hurtful. It hurt you. And, you have to acknowledge that it hurt you and it's okay that it hurt you. It doesn't matter what the scale is because it, you are the scale and it affected you and it's still affecting you and therefore something must be done about it for you to feel free. It's not about forgiving the other person to like let them off the hook or whatever. It's about freeing yourself. So... I read this book and I highly recommend it, The Sexual Healing Journey by Wendy Maltz. And it started bringing up stuff for me and my relationship specifically that I had to confront. And there was a moment I remember, it was actually when I was in Denver. Those of you who've been following for a while, if you remember when I was in Denver and I was doing lives for my hotel there, um, 
my partner and I got in this big old fight. And that was like, that was like the culminating moment. And I remember sitting on the bed and just profusely pouring out all my fears, all the things that I was afraid of, this experience having meant about me. And it was so healing to be able to talk that openly with someone. Um, and after that experience, which I shared with my sister, um, who's also a survivor fr from the same abuser and others, um, we, she encouraged me we were talking about it one day and she was like, well, why don't you paint about it? And it was like a light bulb went off. I don't know why I didn't think about it earlier. <laughs> I'm always telling you guys, use your art, use your art, use your art. And it was like this one subject, it had not dawned on me. I could use my art for this. So that's what I did. I finished that book and I chose to use my art. And that's what I really want to talk to you about today. So that's kind of the lead up to this piece I'm going to share with you. The process I went through to use my art. Because it wasn't just like I hit the canvas and I didn't know what I was doing. It was a process, a very intentional process for healing. And I want to share that with you today. And if you guys have any questions, um, let me know because I'm more than happy to really talk about this. Hi, Cuckoo Take Garbani. Welcome, welcome. All right. So before we get to the canvas, this is my sketchbook. I have many a sketchbook, but this is the little sketchbook that I used when I was starting this process. And the first thing that I decided to do was to, once again, just like with the book, just like with the EMDR, was go back to the experience. Remember, sit with it. And what I wanted to do was to pull out the elements of the experience that stood out to me. I do this a lot with my writing. When I'm writing a scene, I ask myself to picture the scene, feel into it, what's standing out to you? What is it the window? Is it a character? Is it a smell? These are little clues to what the scene is really about. This is the same process I did for this healing experience. I went back to the scene of the crime because this is a crime and it's okay to get angry. Just putting that out there. Get angry. Let's make sure no more victims are created. But I sat with that and I picked out the elements. And I'm not going to share them all with you because they're very um, graphic and intimate. And I don't know what the YouTube and Instagram rules are for sharing this kind of stuff. So I'm not going to share the details. But some of them I will share which in particular was the dress I was wearing that day. I remember that dress like nothing else. Like that was my dress. Um, and I remember a blanket. There was a particular blanket um, that had a tiger on it that I also remember. So those were the elements in addition to some others. And that's part of this process too. It's like, what do you want to reclaim? I wanted to reclaim that dress. Um, also, the tiger on the blanket. A tiger is such an interesting symbol because as an archetype, tigers can evoke passion and they can evoke this unbridled energy. And it was like I, for the longest time, felt scared of my own sexuality, that if I let it out, 
if I let myself be sexual, I wouldn't be able to control it because my abuser couldn't control themselves, clearly. Um, and that's one of the things they talk about in the book. So remembering that I am in control, that my sexuality is not in control of me, that I am uh, an empathetic, beautiful person who would never hurt someone else and sitting and really claiming that aspect of myself, of kindness, of genuine empathy, allowed me to free my sexuality, my tiger, to be and breathe because I am in control of it. Um, so that was another aspect that I wanted to remember. So I... I drew little pictures and then I wrote a lot. It was like a little, um, it was like a little art journal experience. Um, and then after that, I started thinking about the piece and I started thinking about how would I take all these elements plus the feeling that I wanted to evoke in the piece, which was empowerment and protection and, um, and those sorts of things, um, like I, I started writing down ideas. Like I said, reclaiming the dress, held, cradled, safe. I wanted to have those feelings come in, protected, um, lifted, rising, overcoming. These are the things that I really appreciate that. Um, so after I sat with the experience, pulled the noteworthy elements of the experience, then asked myself, how did I want to, like, what did I want to turn those things into? I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. The things that were notable, how do you want to transmute it? What do you want the feeling of the art piece or the dance or the song to be? now that you are moving through it. And um, oh, vulnerability was on my list too, because I wanted to reclaim vulnerability. I like let myself be vulnerable without being scared. Um, so this is what I created. And um, hopefully you can see it okay over there on YouTube too. Um, but I have... I have this little figure here is intended to be me as a child, my true self, um, my innocence, my purity, my beauty, my vulnerability. And it is fully exposed yet unafraid. And, you know, she's not sitting in a way where she's clenching her legs together or she's high, you know, she's trying to keep herself closed up. She's open, relaxed, and pointing up at this sun being who I feel like is also an aspect of self, higher self, the greater soul self, soul, sun, right? my heart, my, it's like so many times in my life, I feel like the future version of me has been pulling me forward. Don't give up yet. Don't give up yet. Keep going. Don't give up yet. Don't give up yet. And if I just keep looking at that, if I just keep pulling on that, I will get to where I want to be. And this sun being is so loving and just filling this space and holding this little girl. Um, this is the dress. So I did the pattern of the dress that I wore that day because I wanted to reclaim it. Um, and the imagery of the tiger on the blanket um, peeking through, right? Again, it's that little bit of element of secrecy and hiding, but I'm still, I'm reclaiming it. That's my, you know, my power 
Um, and there's some other little Easter eggs in there that I won't go into for my own um, privacy sake. But an important element of the creation process that I also want to share is that while I was painting, I had myself listen to very sensual music. And it might feel counterintuitive at first, especially if anything related to sex and sensuality makes you nervous because I had feelings like that. But again, it was a reclaiming. It was about, no, like you don't get to abuse me and then also take my enjoyment of sex away from me, take my enjoyment of my relationships away from me and being intimate with people. You don't get to take my comfortability with my own body away from me and have abused me. Like you did what you did, but you don't get any more. I'm not letting you have any more of me. I'm taking it all back. And so it was a really powerful meditative experience. I had one song in particular that I love and I still love to make love to that song. <laughs> but I played that song on loop while I did this dress and just listened to it over and over and over again. And I tell you, by the time I was done, I felt so empowered and fully empowered in my own sexuality and sexual nature and unafraid of that part of myself that I encourage you to find a song or music if you're going to do visual art that or, or if you're going to dance maybe even too or if you're going to make music heck just sound is so healing and if you can incorporate a song or feel into a song that's evoking that energy you want to reclaim. It really, really was an extra element to this process that I don't think I'd be the same if I hadn't have done that. So um, use music as well um, in your process. <sighs> okay. All right, so if you have any questions about the piece or you want me to talk about um, a different aspect of it, I'm more than happy to do so. Um, but I did want to remind you that if you are suffering, that there are hotlines, um, there are online groups, there are hashtags you can search and find other people, brave people like me who are talking about it. And even just like listening to other people talk about it can help you build your courage and confidence to talk about it. Um, the Sexual Healing Journey by Wendy Maltz. Find your library, see if they have it. If not, find a bookstore, see if they have it. If not, then I guess, Jeff Bezos, you can have my money a little bit more, uh, but get the book. Get the book somehow, get the book. Um, and <sighs> sorry. Um, oh, Dream State asked a question. Have you had visceral reactions when creating the piece. I know sometimes I can get faint when cre creating something that is emotionally intense. I would say that the sketching process was the most intense. Um, and that definitely, um, yeah, there was definitely uh, during this process was the hardest. Um, and I think, too, that might be also why I'd say it's important to do this part. Because then by the time you do that and then you do the sketching of what you want the piece to look like and the elements you want, and then you get to the canvas 
at that point, it's kind of like, it's kind of lost its um, spikes a little bit. You're a little more comfortable with the idea and you recognize that you're not paying. It becomes a part of your story that you're no longer ashamed of and that you're no longer scared to look at. That's why I wanted to, in the, the caption of um, to yesterday's reel, I wanted to say I integrate it. And I really think I'm going to try to make an effort to call it integration rather than healing because healing makes us feel like there's this like thing to aspire to that afterwards it's just over and done with but that's not really in my experience how it works it's an integration process it's a bringing it in it's not a pushing it away or moving beyond it or jumping over it or like leaving it behind it's a pulling it in and once you can pull it in and you can bring it back and you can sit with it and you can love it and you can rewrite your beliefs about it and you can rewrite your, your thoughts about it and you can fuel it and surround it with love and compassion and I got you, baby. You will never be hurt ever again. You will never feel like you have to hide, you know, your sexuality from anything or anyone like you are safe and we claim that for ourselves. Um then we've integrated, then that we've really healed. So let's start maybe changing the language around these processes of shadow work because it really is an integration process rather than a healing process. But thank you for sharing your vulner vulnerably sharing that you have resistance to it. And I did for a long time too. Oh, I'm glad that that makes sense and it's comforting and encouraging dream state. Integration instead of healing. Yep. Yeah. Um, so speaking of integration and um, important, oh, SC, important to take that part of ourselves and care for it. Yes. And you bring up a good point that caring for yourself through this process is also really important, right? When you know you're about to go into a dark cave, do you go unprepared? Would you go without any supplies, no food, a light, maybe a friend? Like when you know you're going to do some deep shadow work, wouldn't it be nice to know you're prepared? How can you care for yourself through that process? So if, say, for example, after this, you're like, I'm going to go get that book Amanda was talking about. I'm fed up just like she was. I'm not going to deal with this shit anymore. I want to I want to heal. I want to integrate. Start preparing. As you're waiting for the book to come in at the library or to be delivered, start preparing. Get yourself a journal. Uh, buy yourself a crystal. Um, let a friend know that you're starting this healing process and you may need a little bit more support or you may be feeling down some of these next few weeks as you're bringing this stuff back up to the surface. Like prepare yourself, prepare your environment, prepare your friends and family and loved ones to support you um, by letting them know. And then you can walk into the dark cave more comforted, more ready, more maybe still scared, right? Because it's a dark ass cave. It's scary. <laughs> but at least I have my backpack. At least I have my flashlight. At least I have my buddy with me. I'm going to be okay. And I'm going to get through this. I'm going to come back out. And I'm going to be so stinking proud of myself for having made it. So I hope that that encourages you to take that care and really turn it towards yourself and care for yourself as you go through this process because you're definitely going to need it. Um, but it's temporary. In my experience, it was temporary. It was just through the healing at, as an active process. It's not a passive process. And then came the feeling good and then came the liberation and then came the empowerment and all of that other stuff that had scared me off faded away and dissolved um to where now i can go on instagram and youtube live and talk about it right so <laughs> um yeah there's progress to be made for sure um
there is, and I'm going to um, close with this, but there is a connection, a very strong and powerful connection. And I really want to explore this. I may create a course or a, a masterclass series about this. There is a strong connection between sexual trauma, um, uh, um, pregnancy issues, anything having to do with the womb, with our, our, our private areas, all that sacral chakra related stuff and our ability to create. And especially uh, for women. So I have seen this so many times in the clients that I've worked with in the rebirth program that there is something there unresolved that is blocking the ability to fully express oneself because our sacral chakra energy is intended to be free flowing, liberated, um, like a fire, allowed to burn and be weird and be ourselves and be sexy and be vulnerable. And all of that is such a powerful part of creating that when we don't resolve things related to those areas, our creative energy has a really hard time getting all the way up to the heart. It gets stuck down here and it can't flow through us freely and out the heart. And that's really where we want it to flow through from. So <clears throat> I don't have, or we're not uh, currently enrolling for the creative rebirth program right now, but the courses for the lower chakras, the root, which is all about feeling safe and secure, the sacral, about feeling free to express yourself, to be who you are, the solar plexus, that empowerment, that motivation, that go get them attitude to the heart, which we all know is the key here at Awaken Creators, that, that feeling openness to create, to love, to be worthy, all of that, those lower four chakras, all the materials, the, the videos, the journal prompts, the meditations, guided meditations, affirmations. Um, there's a ton of stuff in there, other resources available, music that I've shared. Um, so much for all four of those chakras is just available self-paced, if you really want to go deep and you really want to resolve not just the issues relating to sexual abuse healing, but other lower chakra issues that can be affected because it's all so connected, that confidence, that security or sense of lack, all of that there. And then of course, opening the heart to where you feel okay to open your heart, because when you've been sexually abused, it's hard to feel okay opening your heart. Can you trust people? Um, is it safe? Um, so when we work through those issues in our lower chakras, it clears up a lot of energy. Um, so that, if you weren't aware, is available to purchase standalone, the lower lower chakras in a bundle, all the courses, prompts, meditations, everything's in there. It is self-paced though. It's not the program. So I won't be in there with you, but you can always reach out to me for support um, and ask questions in there and I will respond to them. So just want to put that out there that that is available to those of you who feel ready and motivated to do some deeper work energetically and clear out all that stuff and more. Okay. So before I let you go, then I just wanted to thank you. Let's place our hands on our hearts. 
And I want you to thank yourself as well for being here. Whether you are a survivor yourself, know someone who is, even if that someone is me and you just want to show up to support me, thank yourself for being here. Thank yourself for taking that time to love yourself, to love another enough to show up and remember that you are not alone. Never. And you've never been alone. You always have yourself and you can be that sun being for yourself, that future you pulling yourself forward, pulling yourself, whispering in your own ear, don't give up hope. It's just around this bend. Just keep going. You're almost there. And I want to encourage you to encourage yourself to be brave. Go into the cave. Prepare yourself beforehand. But go in. Do what you need to do. See what you need to see. Heal what you need to heal so you can come out fully integrated this experience and ready to own it as part of your story, part of your journey, but not allow it to own you anymore. <sighs> this is my sincere prayer and hope for you and all of those suffering past, present, and future. Thank you so much. I hope you'll join me on Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. UK time. We are doing another channeled Q&A. If you have a creative struggle, you're feeling creatively stuck somewhere, you're even just want my higher self, your higher self, and all the beings of the highest vibrations of love and light here to assist us on our creative journeys. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you on Wednesday. I love you. Bye for now.